G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today, a really useful device for protecting the delicate electronics in your modern quadcopter, RC plane, whatever. Because as we know, model flying these days involves a lot of electronics, even the basic stuff. You've got a receiver, you've got servos, you've got battery, you've probably got an ESC, all that sort of stuff. And if you're going up a bit, you've got flight controllers and GPS and a whole lot of other stuff that uh, relies on being wired in correctly before you plug the battery in. If you don't wire it correctly, then magic smoke can escape. So you want something that's going to basically protect against that, that happening. And that's not it. OK, you can use this. This is, I think I saw Joshua Bardwell. I hadn't seen the video, but I did see the thumbnail. Um, this is one way you can actually test to see whether you're going to have a giant fire on your hands before you plug in your new build. And well, let's demonstrate that now. Let me just pull out a bit here so we can see a bit more of what's going on. Here's a quad. It's hardly a new one. It's actually really old. I've had this for so long. This is my favorite quad. Let's plug that in. And what we've done here is basically put a light bulb in series with the quad. So if there was a short circuit here, instead of gall you know, buckets of smoke pouring out, the light bulb would light up and stay lit quite brightly if it was a dead short circuit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this in. I've got this the right way around. Damn. No. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh, see why See why I need a device that stops my stuff from blowing up? <laughs> so this is going into the quadcopter. I was just plugged into the battery, which is the wrong place. And I have a separate battery here because I don't know whether that's charged or not. I'm going to plug this in and let's see what happens. See if the smoke comes out or... No. There you go. So everything was working fine, right? The light bulb is not illuminated because there's only a tiny amount of current flowing through the light bulb. No smoke came out because this is all good. So we know that this is fine because the light bulb doesn't go. However, if there was a short circuit in here, the light would light up and we'd know there was a problem. But is that the best way to do it? Well, it's, it's, a, it's an adequate way sometimes. But one of the problems we've got is that the really sensitive, delicate electronics inside our flight controllers and the ESCs and things, it can be damaged by even a small amount of current. When, which shouldn't be flying through it. Perhaps you've wired something in backwards, the video transmitter's wired in backwards, or your, your flight controller's wired across the battery backwards. These things can happen. Don't ask me how I know. You saw how much trouble I had plugging into the right lead here. Anyway, so in that case, this probably won't save your bacon. Oh, I'll show you why. Let's take a look at what I mean. Okay, what I've got here is a delicate piece of electronics. This is a 1 8 I think, or 1 10 watt resistor. And this is the kind of stuff that you might find or in a slightly different form inside your delicate electronics. So what I'm going to do here is unplug our little light bulb and I'm going to pretend that we've done something wrong and this delicate piece of electronics is inside my quadcopter or my model airplane. Let me just pull on a bit here because we want to see what's going to happen. Okay, now I'm going to put the battery across this whole setup here and let's see what happens. Oops, if I get it plugged in properly. Come on, here we go. Now look, there's magic smoke. Ah, coming out there. You can probably see the magic smoke's coming out. Oops. So <coughs> the light bulb illuminated, but the magic smoke still came out. The light bulb didn't protect the resistor from being destroyed uh, because these bulbs require quite a bit of current to actually light up. And so you, you, by the time you know you've got a problem, it may be too late. And maybe enough current has flowed through the circuit to toast your valuable little piece of sensitive electronics there like this. Okay, so that's not the best way to check out your model. It's cheap, it's easy, anyone can build it, but is it the best way? Well, no, it's not actually. There is a much better way, and that's what I'm reviewing today. Um, I'm going to show it to you now. Here it is. It's a thing called, I'll have to look it up, the short stop. Short stop, it's here. This is the piece of paper which I'll uh, just wave in front of you. It is an electronic device that, is a, that does the job the light bulb can't do, and that is basically it actually checks to see if there is a problem. And if there's a problem, it doesn't allow any more than a tiny amount of current to show flow for a very, or it allows current to flow, but only for a very short time, not long enough to toast our sensitive electronics, we hope. No guarantees, but it's gonna be much less likely that you'll blow something up if you're using this instead of a light bulb. And how does it work? Well, exactly the same way. When you just have a plug on each end, you put it between the battery and the quad. So let's go through that process again. Let's just connect it up to the quad, and then we'll put a sensitive piece of electronics across it and see what happens. OK, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Ooh, look at that, see? Um, the quad has 
has um, made all its noises, it's working properly. But a green light, this green light means you've got no problems. Everything's fine. It's not drawing too much current and this system hasn't had to kick in and shut it down. So what I'll do now is I'll put a little resistor across this little connection here and we'll see if it is going to protect the delicate electronics when there is a problem. Okay, as you can see, I've put the delicate resistor across the end of the connector there and it's the same, exactly the same value and type of resistor I was using before. I have my battery here. Let's plug it in and see if smoke comes out as it did when I simply used the lamp. No. And you notice there's a red light here. What's happened is this, this, this circuit has detected that there is a connection here that's got two little resistance. There's a potential fault here. So it has basically come up with the red light. Let's take it off. Let's just check it again. Yep, red light. And it's not passing any voltage through. If I get my meter out now and measure the voltage across that delicate piece of electronics, we will see that there shouldn't be any. Let me bring that into shot. I'll put this across my my delicate electronics. Hopefully I get this all into shot. It's a bit hard on the old bench here. Here we go. Here we go. Um, across the lead, across the thing there, nothing. There's nothing. Let me go back, make sure I've got a good connection there. It's a bit hard when I'm trying to do all this with one hand. Here we go. There's nothing there. There's only like just a bit of noise voltage. Okay, and just to prove the point, I'm going to remove that resistor. It fell out anyway. I'm going to cycle the power and plug it back in green light and if we measure we should have the full battery voltage appearing on this connector so there should be a good nearly 12 volts on here and it says 11.41 volts storage there you go so that has basically um, detected the fault and stopped our little resistor from frying i wonder what happens if we actually put on the, the fault after this has gone green will it actually trip it let's see what happens Yes, look at that. As soon as I put the fault condition on there, this tripped out, went to red. So it's like a fuse. Now, if I remove that, will the power come back on? No, it doesn't. Because what it said is there's a fault in here. So we don't want to reapply the power just because the short circuit or the, the low, volt, low resistance has been removed in case there's something else. Because one of the problems you have is if, if it did turn itself back on, what could happen is you plug it in, something blows up like your video transmitter, and that clears the fault. So the power goes back on and then it blows your flight controller up because that's got reverse voltage or whatever across it. So it's a very smart piece of kit, very smart piece of kit, recognizes stuff. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the old oscilloscope on. Let's have a look and see how quickly, how quickly this reacts because when we were using the light bulb, it took a you know second or two for the smoke to come out. Now, of course, in the case of stuff like sensitive semiconductors like processors and, and, and accelerometers, that damage happens very, very quickly. In the case of a resistor, it has to heat up and smoke comes out. So um, we had an opportunity to see light bulb glowed and then resistor smoked. So I could have pulled the plug pretty quickly and I wouldn't have smoked my resistor. But if it had been a delicate piece of um, semiconductor stuff, then almost certainly it would have blown before I could uh, pull the plug because by the time the light bulb was glowing, it would be toast. So we can't react quickly enough to prevent damage in every instance with a light bulb. In fact, we're probably not going to be able to react quickly enough at all. But will this react quickly enough? Let's put on the oscilloscope, see how long it takes to recognize a fault condition and then react to it. OK, let's take a look at what I've done here. I've got the board here and as you can see, I've got some wires coming out of it. And I have this is our sensitive electronic resistor here. This is the one that would smoke if there's a problem. And what I've got here is another resistor. This is a one ohm resistor. It's in series with this because one of the nice thing about, things about one ohm resistors is for every amp of current that flows, one volt will appear across the resistor. So we can measure the current flowing in here with an oscilloscope because oscilloscopes actually only measure voltage. They don't measure current. So we can effectively measure the current by simply measuring the voltage across this resistor. So I have my trusty oscilloscope probes, which I shall connect across that. It doesn't really matter which way around I put them, but we'll put them this way just for the sake of it. There we go. So now I'm measuring the voltage across this resistor in order to measure the current that's flowing through that loop of circuit. And what I'm going to do now is take you over to the oscilloscope. There we go. I'll just pull in a bit so you can see what's happening. And you notice there's nothing on the screen because nothing's happened yet. We'll just get this lined up. I need one of those fluid heads on my tripod, don't I? Anyway, um, what I've got here is the oscilloscope 
this is time. So basically, this, imagine there's a, an electron beam running along here and it's going to travel at, what have we got here? Two milliseconds for every one of these vertical divisions. So it will take two milliseconds to go to there, four milliseconds to there, six, eight, ten, so forth. So we measure the time that things happen using the oscilloscope. And we've got voltage here. So we've got a voltage. And what's going to happen is normally there will be, let me just uh, force a trigger. Here we go. So there's the voltage that exists at the moment. There's no voltage because there's no current. So this is our zero, zero volt level down here. And what I expect to happen is when we plug things in, the voltage will come up because the current will flow. It'll flow for a certain amount of time before the circuit says, hey, there's a problem here. And then it will shut down the current so the voltage will drop as well. So we'll see that the, it peaks at what's going on only for a little while. It doesn't leave everything on. So let's try it out and see. Start it up. I will plug in the battery. And, whoa, look at that, exactly what we expected. What can we tell from this? Well, okay, let's examine the numbers. We have 500 millivolts per division. So that's per vertical. Every one of these horizontal lines is half a volt. So we've gone up one, two, three divisions. So 1.5 volts, which means one and a half amps was flowing in that circuit. And it started flowing here, and it flowed for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten horizontal divisions, which is 20 milliseconds or one fiftieth of a second. So in one fiftieth of a second, this thing figured out that there was too much current flowing and shut it down before the resistor we've got there, that delicate piece of electronics, could smoke and burst into flames. So that's how it works. Now, if we'd put our light bulb here, there would just been that current would have flown forever until we unplugged it manually. So this is a smart piece of kit. It, it basically, once it realizes something's wrong, it instantly disconnects. Well, when I say instantly, it takes a 50th of a second, which is faster than you or I, because if we were using a light bulb, it would probably take, I would expect, you know, um, 100, 200 milliseconds before the light bulb even started to glow. Uh, because filaments have a thing called thermal inertia. They have to heat up. And so even if there was a lot of current flowing, you wouldn't know it until the filament in the light bulb is heated up enough to start emitting light, by which time, your valuable electronics have already become toast, quite likely. So this is a high-tech way of saving your valuable kit. And sure, it's not as simple as a light bulb, but if you, these days, with things like quadcopter stacks costing 50 to 100 bucks, you know, saving just one of those, or even just saving a flight controller, if you get an F4 flight controller, it's 30, oh, sorry, talking New Zealand dollars, yeah, it's probably, what is it, yeah, maybe $30 US that you'll have saved. So I don't know the price of this piece of electronics, but um, it wouldn't take long to pay for itself, I think. So that's how it works. We've measured, and it really does work. And just to show you that it doesn't smoke, the delicate piece of electronics is going to plug it in again. Bing, red light. No smoke. Ooh. Remember, when we did it without the board in there, when, when we did it with the light bulb in there, the smoke came out. And I know, I know, I couldn't finish this video without showing you what magic smoke looks like. I'll do that at the end of the video. In the meantime, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about this board. So there it is, the short stop. And as you can see, it's got terminal blocks on each end so you can easily put wires and you don't need to solder anything. It's got in and out. Um, there's a whole lot of electronics in there, including microcontroller and a FET and so forth. I'm not going to go into the details. And on the back, it's just a circuit board. It's got a piece of heat shrink over it to obviously protect it, although you wouldn't want to get any shorts on here. Um, yeah, that's it. It's Simple, well made, the, the construction is very good, the layout seems fairly good. I've got no complaints about it from an engineering or an electronics perspective. So yeah, it looks kind of nice. Now it's made by J Bauer Electronics. Um, and I'm always keen to see a company uh, producing innovative new products. Let me just put the brochure under here. So well, let me have to pull out of it so you can see what it says. This is not much here and I've looked on the website. They don't actually have this on the website to buy yet. So this is uh, the second generation prototype. They did send me an earlier one and I reviewed it. I did. I went to all the trouble of, of doing all this stuff with this early one. And then at the last minute they said, no, no, don't publish that review. We've made some changes. So they made some changes. The changes were actually quite subtle, but quite important because one of the problems you have with modern electronics is there's lots of things called capacitors in them. If you have a capacitor in something, then when you first apply the power, you get a sudden surge of current to charge those capacitors. So what was happening apparently was when you use this one, it was giving you false triggers because it was seeing the discharge capacitors as a potential short circuit and tripping. What they've done here is they've waited a bit longer. They've given us 20 milliseconds for those capacitors to charge and then inspected the amount of current flowing and said, 
too much, too little. I should also point out that this has a little switch, so you can change the current at which it trips uh, from 3 amps to 1 amp. So in a very simple model with just an ESC and a receiver, 1 amp is probably going to be fine. If you've got something like a quadcopter, when I was testing that quadcopter there before I had it set to the 3 amp uh, setting because on the 1 amp it would trip occasionally, so 3 amps was, was better. But what I would say is start with a 1 amp trip and if it trips then try the 3 amp. If it doesn't trip on 1 amps then it's good as gold. And if it doesn't trip on 3 amps, yeah, it's, it's fine. So yeah, um, I'll put a link to the JBower website in the description. No shills, no affiliates, nothing like that. Uh, you can go and have a look. Hopefully they'll have some inf information up on this pretty soon, but they don't have anything at the moment. So you won't find the product on the website, but obviously it's coming because look, I've got one. Yeah, so I've got two. So there you go. Now if you've got comments, questions, anything to say or ask or comment on res in respect to this review, please put that in the place provided by YouTube. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a damn big thumbs down and tell me why you don't like the video. What have I done wrong? Have I been, I don't know, have I spoken too quickly? Have I got a funny accent uh, with the colours wrong? What was wrong with the review if you didn't like it? Anyway, I hope you find this useful. I, I will certainly be using this quite a bit. It's a very quick, cheap and easy way to make sure that you're not going to let the magic smoke out the first time you plug in your complicated new build. And here, partly because you know you want to see it and partly because it'll make a great thumbnail, is the magic smoke coming out of the resistor. Woo, look at that. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys. Spot you later.